When we do a budgeted balance sheet, we might need to prepare for budgeted prepaid expenses and the cost of sales. Even though cost of sales go on the income statement, they're going to affect our balance of stock. So we'll need to figure that out in a balance sheet. So let's take an example. On the 31st of March, a uh, business has current assets and in it there are prepaid, there is prepaid insurance of $900. And that is it in our balance sheet there. Their prepaid insurance is actually paid on the 1st of Jan, so back here. And we're going to do a budget just for April. So what we'll need to do is figure out well, how much is going to go in for the budgeted cash flow statement, income statement and balance sheet for April. So let's look at that. So we know that there's 12 months in a year and we know that we paid $1,200. Well, we can imply that because there's nine months of the insurance policy left and the balance is $900. So that must be $100 each month. So that uh, leaves uh, $900 as a prepaid asset uh, for the next nine months. So during the, uh, April, what will we actually pay of that insurance? We won't actually pay anything. It was actually paid back in January. So during this actual month here, even though we're going to incur $100, there won't actually be any payments because the payment happened all the way back here. So we can leave that out. In the budget and income statement, what will be incurred during April? Well, it's just the one month of $100. So that'll be an expense of $100 in our budget. And in the balance sheet, what will we list as our uh, current asset in the budgeted balance sheet at the end of April? It's going to be $800. And that'll be because at that point in time, there's going to be eight months remaining. And there's $100 left of each month. So that is $800. Let's look at cost of sales. Cost of sales can be a tricky one. We've used a formula to figure it out in Unit 3. We're going to use the same formula. And it's just a question of how the, uh, the uh, questions actually ask, like which number we don't have. So in this case, the business budgets for cost of sales of $50,000, a fixed markup of 50% is applied to all sales. Well, let's budget for our sales. How would we do that? Well, we do that and our options are $75,000, 25000 50,000 or 100,000. So the temptation when we see 50% is to say, well, that's double because it's half of 100. So the actual sales will be 100% and that will actually be wrong. Um, so will 50,000, that would be a markup of zero. 25,000 is wrong because that would actually be half of what we bought it for, which wouldn't make any sense. We'll get rid of that one because even though it seems logically like it would be right, it's not. And we're going to say the right answer is 75,000. And we want to get a bit scientific and just use a formula every time. So the formula we're going to use in this case is the cost of sales times by one plus markup will be our sales. So in this case, we had cost of sales of 50 times one plus the markup of 50%, which is 0.5, will equal our sales. So we're going to do 50,000 times 1.5 will actually be 75,000. So it doesn't matter what the numbers are or the markup percentage, as long as we use that formula, we're always going to get the right answer. What about if the question asks it slightly differently? It says cost of sales are 100,000 and this time we've got a markup of 150. What are the budgeted sales? Well, because we know our formula, we can't really be tricked. All we know is that we've just got to put the numbers in and we'll get the right answer. So will the right answer be 200, 150, 100, or 250. Well, we actually, when we put the numbers in the formula, we'll see that it's not going to be 200,000 because that'll be a markup of 100. It's not going to be 100,000 because that'll be a markup of zero. 150,000 will be a markup of 50. It's actually going to be 250,000. And the reason why is we just put our numbers into our formula. Cost of sales times one plus markup equals sales. So we've got 100,000 times one plus the markup, and a markup of 150% is 1.5. So we're gonna do 100,000 times 2.5 is 250,000. Let's change the way the question's asked. This time we're given the sales. It says sales are 150,000, that's what we'll budget for. The firm applies a markup of 50%. So what will we budget for our cost of sales? Will it be 75, 120, 100, or 50,000. So again, the temptation is to look at the 50% and say that's double. So given that the sales we're budgeting for 150, the cost of sales must be 75. Well, as we'll see, uh, that's actually incorrect. The right answer will be 100,000. 
And what we want to do is just tweak our formula a bit. So when we have the sales but not the cost of sales, we can get it by going cost of sales equals sales divided by 1 plus markup. So in this case, we've got 150,000 divided by 1 plus a markup of 50%. So that's 0.5. So we'll do 150,000 divided by 1.5 equals 100,000. And now it doesn't matter what number we get given, we can always just use the formula and we'll get the right answer. So this time we're given sales of 150,000 and a markup of 200. And again, just looking at it, you probably look at that and say, well, that's a double uh, markup, 200%. So the answer must be 75,000. Um, so our options this time are 75, 100, 30 or 50. So we'll get rid of all of them except for 50,000. So why did we end up with 50,000? Just a simple a matter of uh, crunching the numbers. Sales equals 1 divided by 1 plus markup. So in this case, sales were 150,000 divided by 1 plus a markup of 200%, which is 2.0. So 150,000 divided by 3, that equaled 50,000. Uh, one more, what about if we budget for sales of 150000 and it says a fixed markup is maintained on goods to ensure a gross profit that is equal to 40%. What is our budgeted cost of sales? So this one's a little different, quite tricky. Is it going to be 60000 90000 120000 or 75000 Well, let's get a bit scientific. We'll say it's not 60, it's not 75, it's not 120. It's going to be 90,000, but why? Well, let's have a look. We know that if the sales are 100% less cost of sales, that'll equal a gross profit. Well, sales will be 100% of sales. We've been told the gross profit is 40% of sales. So that must mean that the cost of sales part is 60% of sales. So putting our numbers in, if sales are 150,000, gross profit's 40% of that, so that must be 60,000. Well, that must mean the cost of sales is the difference, which is 90,000. So that's just another tweak to the question, and that's probably the trickiest one. But as long as you apply the formula each time, it doesn't matter what numbers you get, you'll be able to get the right answer.